Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So today we'll be learning about synchronization in Java. Synchronization is a capability to control the access of multiple threads to any shared resource. So what do we mean by this? Uh, let's say there is an object or a file which has been shared by multiple threads inside the same program. And uh, let's assume this uh, object has got a value of 10. And when it has been shared between all the three or four threads, all the four threads will be having the value 10. Now, well, let's say during the process, if one of the threads is changing the value of 10 to like 20 or 30, it may not be reflected to the other threads. So the value that is held by the other threads are wrong values. So this should not happen in an environment where we you know, have uh, multiple threads and uh, they are doing the same job. So we need to have a synchronized environment where the value that is changed inside an object should be reflected to all the other threads. So there is a way in Java to you know, make it happen and that's what we call it as synchronization. So Java synchronization is done when we want to allow only one thread to access a shared resource. So how we are going to do it? So let's say there is a shared resource and it has to be shared between number of threads. So at any point of time, we'll make sure that only one thread is able to access that object. Once it completes its execution, then that object can be released so that other threads can be accessing the same object. So it is mainly used to prevent thread interference and also to prevent consistency problems. So thread interference in the sense two or three threads fighting for the same object. So there might be a, a disadvantage in that part. And the second one preventing consistency problem like what I said initially a value that has been shared between the objects and one thread is trying to change the value of that object and it is not reflected to other objects. So there is a consistency problem here. So this synchronization concept is mainly used to avoid these two scenarios so in order to make it happen we create a concept called as mutual exclusion which is nothing else but when a data is shared between the threads this mutual exclusion concept helps us to keep the thread without interfering with one another so how it is done so in order to exploit this mutual exclusion inside your programming we are going to use three different concepts one is the synchronized method second one is the synchronized block and third one is static synchronization we will see that in the near future with the help of a small program and before that uh, we have a concept which will help us to establish this uh, synchronization or mutual exclusion this concept is what we call it as locks otherwise it's called as monitor so this is an operating system concept almost uh, people who are, know about this os concepts will be very well aware of this locks and monitor but anyhow this lock is uh, nothing else but a uh, you know, capability of uh, you know, uh, uh, controlling an object. So every object has a lock associated with it. So if suppose one thread wants to access this object and when multiple threads are fighting for the same object, the first thread that access this object will acquire the lock of that object. So once a lock is acquired by this object, then we will make sure that no other thread can use this object because it has been locked by some other object. So when the object has finished its working and it has used all the resources and everything, then it can release the lock so that the object becomes free now. And when there is no lock you know, controlled on an object, other threads can access it. So this is how we established the synchronization concept in Java. So let's th see this with the help of a simple program. So in order to understand the concept of synchronization, uh, let's try to create a program where we can have a simple object that has been shared by multiple threads so let me create a initial class first okay let me have the name of the class as words okay So let me have a simple method here so let's call this method as um, a print car okay print line something okay let me call it as uh, printing okay fine that will be good so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to check for a uh, input value if the value is um let's say four then i will print a set of you no know, letters or else i will print a set of another letters so that's the concept 
So if n value is 4, we will uh, print a set of uh, letters or else we will print a set of other letters. So let me start printing it. Dot out dot. Let's say we print hello or something. And uh, once we print the first letter, we can uh, make the thread to sleep for like 500 milliseconds. And let's uh, print a small space in the beginning. So hello is printed if n value is 4 and uh, likewise let's print uh, some other letter or some other words uh, when we have some other value apart from 4. Let me call it as okay bikes okay so the concept for this um, simple class word is over. Now let's do one thing. We will create. We will create two thread classes. So let me call the first class as thread one. Let this class extends the thread common class. Okay. And let me create another thread class. It's done. So let's have a constructor which can receive the object common object and which can assign this common object to the thread classes object. So let's just constructor be one. So what I do is um, first of all I'll create a class or create an object for the words class here so that I can call that function from here. So words w1 let this object be here. Now we can receive this object which can be sent from the main function. We will do that later. So in a similar fashion, I will do for thread class 2. Okay. After this, uh, we need a run method. So inside run method, let's have a try catch mechanism. Or uh, instead, we can have the try catch mechanism in this class itself so that uh, it will be easier for us. So if uh, there is any interruption in the sleeping method, so that will be intimated with the help of this try method and it will be caught here and it will be easily handled. Let me print uh, the stack trace so that will give us information about what type of error we face. So in your inside your run method, we can just uh, no, uh, call this method that is present inside words the method name is printing so let me pass a value of um, okay let's say it is 4 so in a similar fashion I can create a run method for the second thread class and here I can send a value of 2 or let's say 8 okay now we are done with the thread classes we have to create the main class so the main class name is demo ts demo so let me create the main function and since uh, this main function is capable of throwing the interrupted exception i'm going to throw that here the main method is created now our job is to create a object for the first words class words ob is equal to new words okay 
So I'm done with this object. Now only one object is created and we are going to share this object between the threads. So let me create the thread object first. So thread one, the one is equal to new thread one. And here I'm going to pass this object that was created for words. So the first thread is using this object. Now this object has to be captured in this constructor here. So I'm going to use that. Let me call this as temporary object T object. Now W1 is equal to T object. So indirectly what happens when you create an object for this thread class, T1 is created with the help of object OB that is passed inside this thread1, which will be captured by the constructor. So once the constructor captures, now this T object will be equivalent to this OB. And also we are saying the T object to W1. So ultimately what happens, W1 is equal to the object OB. And later on with the help of W1, we are calling the function printing and passing a value of 4. So likewise, I am going to create another object for T2. I mean thread 2. And we are passing the same object here. So it means the single object has been shared between two threads. Now here also I need to receive that object. So let me call this as temporary object again. So W2 will be equal to the object. So now W2 will also be using the same object OB. I think we are done with the uh, basics of uh, the concept and uh, now we can uh, just call the start method so that we can run the thread so t1 dot start t2 dot start hope it's clear java c yes demo dot java It's perfect without any error, so let's go for the execution part. Now, if you see the values that are printed, since I'm using the same object, the threads are sharing the same object, and once when one thread is sleeping, the object will be used by another thread. Uh, so that's why we are getting you no know, an unexpected output here. So I am just expecting hello to be printed first, followed by the second word bikes, because that's how I call. So initially I called t1 dot start so obviously what has to happen is this one has to execute so w1 will be equal to the object ob when w1 starts printing this so this 4 matches with the value that has been passed here so since it matches it has to start printing the element here but once it once it starts printing this space then it goes for sleep mode for 500 millisecond so at that point of time the next thread takes control but actually our concept is that I am sharing a single object so uh, I don't want two or more threads to be you know accessing the same object at the same time so I want to find a mechanism so that I allow only one object to access or sorry one thread to access the same object and once that thread has released that object then the second thread can access so what can be done here we are going to use the mechanism of synchronization so it will be this is the method which has been shared Okay, frankly speaking, this is the method printing which has been shared between the two threads. So the method that has been shared has to be in a synchronized fashion. So we will be including the keyword synchronized. Along with the return type. So once you make this method as a synchronized method, then when any two or more objects try to access the same method, only one object will be given the access. So it means there is a log that is applied on this object with related to a single thread and once the thread releases that log the next thread can access the same function now let's check the output after this modification if you see the first object is accessing the first the first thread is accessing the object then after the thread has released the second thread is accessing it so if you reverse the starting process let's say i'm going to you know start on t2 first and then t1 next 
let's see what happens now according to our logic d2 should take the log first as you see t1 is accessing the object sorry t2 is accessing the object then comes t1 so this is how synchronization works so when you want to you know have a concept where one single object or one single resource has to be shared between the threads and also they have to work in a proper fashion so that each and every thread can get a proper access to that object we can go for synchronization so there are other mechanisms to perform the synchronization that we will see in the future videos so thank you for watching this video if you have any queries please do post in the comment section i would like to answer that i'll see you in the next video thank you Thank you.